here's an example of how to use sampling distributions to find the probability of something. Well, there's a couple of things about sampling distributions that are true that we need to visit very quickly in order to use um, the properties of a sampling distribution. Um, first of all, we need to know that a sampling distribution takes on a normal shape. So it's going to be bell-shaped and symmetric. Now, if we have a normal shape, there are a couple of things that we need in order to define a normal model. And those two things that we need to define the normal model are the mean and the standard deviation. If we're going to use a normal model, we have to know these two things in order to, uh, in order to use it and define it. Well, when we have a sampling distribution, the mean of the sampling distribution, in this case, I'm going to be working with proportion. So this, the notation here, let me rewrite this, make it look a little, little, little bit nicer. The mean of the sampling distribution for this proportion, so little subscript p hat there, is equal to the population mean okay and in this case the population mean is just P all right the other thing that we need to know the standard deviation of a population distribution for proportions um, is going to be equal to this the standard deviation um, for P hat or in other words the standard deviation of a sampling distribution of proportions is equal to the square root of P times Q all over n, our sample size. And notice that this p is not p hat. We do not want to use the p hat that comes from our sample. We want to use the p that is defining, that is up here, that defines our normal model. Because these are parameters. These are supposed to be true about the population. So if it's true about the population, this p and this q have to be just p and q um, that, that, that come from this p right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at this example and see how we can uh, set up our uh, sampling distribution and then how can we use it. Green M&Ms are supposed to make up 30% of the candy sold, and we're talking about M&Ms here. In a large bag of 250 M&Ms, what is the probability that we get at least 25% green? Well, remember, basically what I want to do, I want to, I want to set this up by saying that I want to use a normal model, since it says probability, Okay, I'm trying to find the probability of something, and I'm talking about a sample, and my sample size is right here, the 250 M&Ms in my bag. That is my sample. I am going to use a sampling distribution. And if I'm going to use a sampling distribution, I need to define a couple of things, like we just talked about. I need to know what is the mean or the center of this distribution, and I also need to know what is the standard deviation. So we'll get to that here in just one second. Before I define it, I better make sure that I can actually, um, that I'm actually allowed to move on. There are some conditions assumptions and conditions that we need to check. So let me write it like this, because usually we say assumptions and conditions. And there are three assumptions and conditions that we need to check when we're working with a sampling distribution for proportions. The first one that we need to check is the randomization. Randomization condition. Okay, and the reason why the randomization condition is so important is because we want to make sure that our sample represents randomization. There it is. Uh, we want to make sure that our sample represents the population. Well, I don't know if these 250 M&Ms were randomly selected, but I am going to assume that they are. So I, I should say something like this. We assume that the 250 M&Ms represent, represent, I can't spell today, represent the population. Sorry about that. Represent the population of M&Ms. Okay. The second condition that we need to check is called the 10% condition. 
we need to make sure that our sample size is not more than 10% of the entire population. Because if it is more than 10% of the entire population, then we may run into some trouble with our probabilities not, or our trials not being independent. But in this case, 250, I would just write this, 250 M&Ms is less than less than 10% of all the M&Ms. Okay, that's definitely true. I probably ate at least 250 M&Ms over the last uh, Christmas break. Those green and red ones are awful yummy. But for regular M&Ms, 250 is definitely less than all the M&Ms in the world. So that is that satisfies our 10% condition. We need to make sure that our sample is less than 10% of the entire population. And then finally, the last assumption and condition that we need to check is called the success-failure condition. Success-failure. Even though we don't want our sample size to be too large, that's why we check the 10% condition, we still need it to be large enough so that we get at least 10 successes and at least 10 failures. And the way that we check that is with these two little formulas. We take n times p, and we want to make sure that that's greater than or equal to 10, and we also check n times q to make sure that that is greater than or equal to 10. So let's double check this. Well, remember, p is 30%. That's up here. That's the parameter that we're dealing with. Okay, so I check n, which is 250, times p, which is 0.3, and that is equal to, I'm going to check that, 75. And then I'm also going to check 250n times q, and q is 0.7, and 250 times 0.7 gives me 175. So both of these are greater than 10, therefore the success-failure condition has been satisfied. So now that all of my assumptions and conditions have been satisfied, I can use this normal model in order to find my probability. But before I use the normal model, I have to define two things. I have to define the model for p hat the model for my sampling distribution. The reason why we say p hat is because this is a model that comes from a sampling distribution. And the model for p hat is going to be this, n, because it's normal, and then my mean, or the average, of the proportions is equal to 0.3 or 0.30. Because, and the, and the reason that is true is because the center of a sampling distribution will always center itself around the population mean. And in this case, the population mean is 0.3. So the center of my distribution is also 0.3. Now I need to find my standard deviation. And I said before up here that the standard deviation for proportions, for a sampling distribution of proportions, is given by this formula, the square root of p times q over n. So let's go down here and find it. Do a little scratch work off to the side. The standard deviation of my sampling distribution is equal to p, which is 0.3, times q, which is 0.7, all over n. And in this case, n is 250. And that is equal to 0.029, approximately 0.029. So now I can put that into my model, 0.029. Now that I have a, a, the parameters for a normal model, I can actually use it to find the area under, under a curve or anything else. So I am going to now use, <clears throat> I need to find a critical value here. And the formula for a critical value is this. Since I'm using proportions, I am going to use a normal distribution Z. And the formula that I need looks like a z-score, p hat minus p all over the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. Sometimes that's called the margin of error, all of this. Well, that is equal to 
0.3 times 0.7 all over my sample size, which is 250. It's just like finding a z-score. Whenever we find a z-score, this goes back. This should be review for most of you that are watching this. A z-score is our observed value minus the, or I shouldn't say it like that, but it's the um, sample value minus the parameter divided by the standard deviation. So that's really what I'm doing right here. The sample value is p hat, the parameter is p, and the standard deviation is given to us right here, the square root of 0.3 times 0.7 over 250. This formula is basically the same thing as this formula. They're almost exactly the same. Only here I'm dealing with um, a sampling distribution. All right, let me erase this, get it out of the way. And let's go ahead and find this. Well, my sample proportion, if I go back to my original question, was boop, 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 uh, the one that I'm concerned with is 25%. I want to know what is the probability that we get at least 25%. So here we go. 0.25 minus P, the parameter, 0.3. All over, the, all over the standard deviation of my sampling distribution, which is 0 0.029. This is equal to negative 1.73. I've done the math ahead of time, so I don't need my calculator just yet. So here we go. I want to know, when I draw a picture of this, I want to know what is the probability that I get more than... Was it more than or less than? I think it said more than. Yep, I get at least 25%. So that means greater than or equal to. So negative 1.73 is my critical value over here. And I want to know what is the probability that I get more than that. So I need to find the shaded region right here. Okay? Since it says more than or it says at least. All right, now I jump to my calculators, and I can go ahead and go with um, normal CDF. So I'm going to find the area of that shaded region. Since I'm using a normal model, I go second VARS. Number two is my normal CDF calculator. And I'm going to go from negative 1.73 all the way to 99. And when I hit enter, I get 0.958. So the area that I have shaded here is 0.958. That tells me this. I'll go ahead and type this in as a complete sentence here. Let's see. Right about here. <clears throat> now this is an important little phrase. According to the normal model, since I used a normal model, we need to say according to the normal model, the probability that our bag contains at least 25% green M&Ms is about... 95.8%. You can write it as a decimal or a percent either way. But this is how you can use a sampling distribution to find probabilities. Big picture, in order to use a sampling distribution, you should know that the central limit theorem says that um, you can use a normal model and if you're going to use a normal model, you have to define the variables or define the uh, parameters. And the mean of a sampling distribution is going to be equal to the population mean. And the standard deviation of a sampling distribution it has its own formula. And in this case, the formula for pro uh, proportions is given right here, the square root of P times Q over N. You always need to then check your assumptions and conditions to make sure that you can use a normal model. And once you find that, you can use it, and you can use it just like you would use the normal model with Z scores to find the probability of something. And I hope this helps, and good luck in your stats class.